Welcome to Kalusugan ay Karapatan. I am Dr. Menchit Padilla, your host for today. This is part of a series of episodes on COVID-19. The COVID-19 pandemic, which has affected almost every country, has made many healthcare systems around the world operate at more than maximum capacity for many months now. As millions of people stay at home to minimize transmission of the virus, healthcare workers prepare to do the exact opposite. They go to the hospitals and other healthcare facilities, putting themselves at high risk from COVID-19. As a pandemic accelerates, access to personal protective equipment for health workers has been a key concern. In the Philippines, an alarming number of healthcare workers infected with a new coronavirus rose to 1,619 as of April 30, 2020, counting to nearly 20% of the country's total COVID-19 cases. In this pandemic, healthcare workers are every country's most valuable resource. Hence, the safety of health workers must be ensured. We are with Dr. Regina Berba, Associate Professor of the UP College of Medicine and Chair of the Hospital Infection Control Unit of the Philippine General Hospital. This time, we will discuss protection at the hospitals. Good day, Dr. Nina. Welcome back to Kalusugan ay Karapatan. Hello po. Hello, everybody. Thank you for inviting me again. Yes. So last time, we, we talked about protecting oneself from COVID-19. This time, we are going to concentrate on protecting the health worker from COVID-19. But before we go to the details, can you... Can you give us a general uh, definition of what protection is? So protection is uh, like a series of strategies or a system that either a person, an institution, or a facility takes so that uh, he can guard or defend uh, vulnerable populations against something bad. Okay, so... I think today we will be talking about protection against um, the COVID-19 for healthcare workers. So let's start the discussion now, Dr. Nina. So just how does one protect the health worker from COVID-19? Uh, when we started off planning on a hospital level, how we will deal with the covid 19. Noon, coronavirus patawag sa kanya when we started planning this. You know, our number of beds we allotted for COVID in PGH was only two. Yun yung sabi namin, siguro two lang ang pupunta sa center natin kasi at the time, the risk factors were travel to certain countries. Diba? Parang ganun yung initial risk factors. But then, lo and behold, in a few weeks, we were converted into a COVID referral center. So it took a lot from, not just from the infection control and the uh, infectious disease people, but it really took the whole hospital to plan to protect people from getting uh, infected or have the transmission of uh, the COVID-19 within our facility. So, yeah. Um, how do we protect? So it was a long series of um, careful planning, really trying to uh, step up everything we could to really protect our own healthcare workers and our patients also. Okay, so we, we were talking about um, protecting the health worker and you gave a lot of insights on what hospital planning actually um, contributed to the whole protection plan, okay? For our viewers, I'd like you to know that Dr. Burba Nina, Dr. Nina, is in charge of coming up with the policies to protect only the patients but the health workers for any kind of infection. So I'd like to ask now, Dr. Nina, what makes this infection so difficult or so different such that uh, the measures that you put in to the hospital into PGH are actually more comprehensive and more drastic compared to the past? Um, 
Perhaps it's the um, the degree of uh, being very very infectious. It's I think it's really highly contagious. So parang it takes very little for a person to get infected to get the virus into oneself. No, tapos um, the presentation is also not very clear. Hindi ba katulad ng tuberculosis? Alam mo na na TB siya or dengue? Alam mo na na but uh, the COVID, it started off with like uh, symptoms that was like difficult to exactly pin down. So there would be some patients you thought, ah, siguro hindi to COVID, pero will turn out to be COVID. So in that way, it was uh, this, this kind of infection is unique, it's highly contagious. So we needed really drastic measures in place, parang we couldn't leave anything to chance. We had to, we committed, the PGH committed to uh, admitting 130 beds, 130 patients na COVID positive kaagad. So uh, we needed to plan this very carefully. And you know what, Dr. Aramenchi, um, everything we knew about infection control and infectious disease had to come in here to be able to design a uh, good plan for our hospital. Okay, so uh, as you said, no, we had to bring to the table all the knowledge and all the things that we knew about infections and how to protect. But now there are different kinds of health workers in the hospital setting. I'd like you to share with us uh, the different levels of uh, protection that we give the health workers within the hospital. Mm -hmm. So. Actually, we there's like a hierarchy. There's there's because of maybe the epidemics and the pandemics that the world has experienced. There's already this, parang science of infection control. It starts off with engineering controls. So the very first thing we did to make sure that there's like just the whole building or the whole institution was uh, to some degree had in, uh, had protection would be to uh, be able to uh, navigate the ventilation to control where the air was going to. Remember, this is a human-to-human -human transmission of infectious droplets. So, kailangan kaya namin i-maneuver, i-traffic where these droplets will go. And that meant uh, planning the ventilation, where the fans will be, where the exhaust fans will go, what windows were open and what windows were closed. So, all of those were things that we had to put in place. The beds, the, the placement of the beds, how far they were from each other. Parang finoforecast namin, uh, siguro yung infectious droplets, pag umubutong pasyente na to, dapat hindi siya makaabot dun sa next bed. So we needed to position the beds. Kahit cohorting, kasi cohorting is putting patients of the same diagnosis together. Pero kahit magkakasama sila sa isang ward, Di sila magiging, uh, each person won't get affected or negatively affected by the people around them. And so those are engineering controls. There were also administrative controls that meant uh, we, we had to plan every meter of PGH. Eh. Sinabi namin, oh, ito safe zone to, green to. Ito red to, masyado mataas ang possibility na magkaka-COVID ko nandito ka sa red zone. So, we labeled different, all areas of the hospital. So whenever a person was in a particular part of the hospital, kanyari nasa uh, second floor siya, ward 2, alam niya na, ah, ito dapat ang suot ko kasi nasa red zone ako. Ah, ito, sige, pwede ko kumain dito kasi nasa green zone. No? So every part of the hospital, each by each, nilagyan namin yan ng label. So that's part of administrative control. And of course, yung parang pinaka- visible sa public yung tinatawag na personal protective equipment. So ito po yung uh, on an individual basis, binibigyan natin bawat healthcare worker ng some amount of protection through barriers ang tawag yung barriers para hindi pumunta yung virus sa kanilang person. No? Okay, so, so Dr. Nina, before we go to the PPEs, no, um, I just want to highlight that point na uh, the role of engineering, if you're in a hospital setting, it is crucial that administration 
recognizes the role of the engineering design if you will commit to a COVID hospital. Because um, uh, that is actually a major uh, component of protecting not only the patients, but also the health workers. And that is a commitment that PGH committed to at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So, so my, my question on that end is that, uh, since we don't know whether patients have COVID or no COVID, should we really be, shouldn't the hospitals be considering reviewing the engineering design of the, the other hospitals, whether it's a COVID hospital or not? Mm. May tinatawag na isolation facilities talaga. And before, before all of this pandemic happened, there's really the ideal setting, which is really very difficult to get. Mahal, mahal mahirap hanapin yung mga uh, equipment that, re that is required to maintain the negative pressure na tinatawag. But along the way, we learned that there are ways to still be able to achieve the kind of good engineered, central, centrally controlled kind of ventilation. Ma-achieve mo rin yun. Pag-isipin mo rin lang mabuti how things flow, maintaining na yung air will count from clean to dirty. And parang biglang natuto nga kami gawin to eh during the um covid pandemic of course guided by our engineers in the hospital so the answer to your question ma'am is yes we need the guidance of engineering experts kasi ito yung isa sa mga major controls and if you're able to uh, maneuver enough the kind of ventilation and others within your hospital parang 50% siguro ng protection is already uh, achieved at that point. Uh, that, that, that's good to know because uh, our, our health workers in PGH uh, will appreciate knowing that PGH planned it well by starting off, you know, looking at engineering design of the COVID wards. So, um, it's really nice to hear that, you know, there are major external factors uh, that's contributing to uh, protecting the health worker because if you read the if you read the, the newspaper you read the, the Facebook the Viber you all, you all hear about just PPEs the protection uh, the the PPEs the mask and so on but here you're saying that that's that that's only half of the picture we have to make sure that the workplace is also safe for our health workers so I'd like to thank you for highlighting that point because for the hospital administrators who are watching our show, I, I, I hope that they realize that we in administration have a major responsibility. Now let's talk the PPEs. No? That's everybody's talking about the PPEs. The, the lay people know what the PPEs are. There's so much fundraising happening for the PPE, but just tell us a little about what are PPEs? What's the composition of the PPEs? Okay. So, uh, PPEs, ang tawag sa kanila, personal protective equipment, it's, uh, these are equipment or mga gamit na pwede isuot. They're meant to be barriers so that uh, even if you're carrying up close patients who are very ill and very infectious, the risk na you will get whatever they have is not that high. In fact, if you wear this properly, dapat you're protected enough. You have to believe in the science of PPEs. I always tell my students, the fellows, the nurses, when we were starting this, nagiiyakan lahat ng tao, ayoko, ayoko, ganito. You had to, I, I told them, you just have to believe that all of this is science and all of this are meant to protect us. Hindi tayo mamamatay lahat. We are pouring so much effort and there's been so much resources, donations, help from all to come up with you know, engineering, administrative, and all of these PPEs to protect the healthcare workers. Yeah. So let me, pwede, pwede ka describe. Meron po ako mga dalang mga gamit to show you exactly what PPEs are. So um, we, uh, in PGH, we try to make it a little bit easier for everybody to understand. So 
if you see in the YouTubes, na yung mga healthcare workers in China, for example, in other countries, nakahasmat, right? naka-coveralls, covered na covered sila, hindi lahat ng tao in the hospital would need that. It really depends on what the tasks you are supposed to do, who you are caring for, and the skills that you have. That will all determine what kind of PPEs you will wear. Okay, so for example, nasa office ka lang. So, syempre may mga office people kami, the administrative people. Uh, you don't need to wear the hazmat. Uh, we call that lowest risk or level one. We called it in PGH level one. And for that, we just need the surgical mask. So, ganito yan. So, these are the surgical masks. Usually, three ply yan. We prefer the ones that are colored. And you always wear the colored side palabas. Kasi the colored side is supposed to be uh, fluid resistant. So kahit na atsinang ka ng mga office mates mo, may some degree of protection. Hindi mo siya mahihina. And there's like a small plastic here on top. So that's the one you put over your nose. So you want to wear them like this. Ganyan. So, good way to wear it is over your nose and then under your chin and all the way to the back, okay? So, kung may choice kayo, you'd like to wear, to buy the three-ply. Ayaw mo yung puti lang kasi sobrang nipis. Or if you're working in the hospital, ayaw mo rin yung paper, okay? So, this is level one. Okay. Uh, ayaw mo rin na nandyan na, nakakita ko na ganyan minsan. Wala, wala na protection when you put it under your chin. Sometimes people wear it like this. This is also wrong. Kasi, syempre, uh, you'd like to also not breathe dirty air. Eh? So that's why we put it here. And, for example, you're the person who's coughing. Nabasa na yung mask mo. Two hours mo palang ginagamit, basang basa na. Throw mo na siya away safely. Uh, huwag mo siya kalat sa mga tables kasi, syempre, contaminated na siya. Um, and uh, change into a new mask. Yeah. In the hospital setting, unlike at home where we accept cloth masks, if you're working in the hospital, we prefer you to wear a surgical mask because in the hospital setting, it's been said and experts would say that uh, the level of protection is high enough you need a surgical mask. Okay? So that's for office workers. Now, Level two is low risk. So that means uh, you may be seeing patients, uh, pero they're not most likely COVID patients. Okay, so based on everything you know, when you saw the patient, hindi siya siguro COVID, it's fairly safe, non-COVID wards ang tawag namin dyan. So green areas. But you'd like to still have some protection. So level two is a face mask and a face shield. Okay. Sometimes we can wear an eye, uh, basta eye protection. Ang protect mo dito ay yung mucous membranes of your eye. So kahit atsingan ka ulit ng pasyente, hindi siguro pupunta yung infectious droplet into your eye. So this is worn like this. And you can move around the whole day wearing the face mask. Minsan mahirap lang makinig. But you have to just... Uh, Increase the volume of your voice and listen a little bit more closely. Uh, I like this one because we can clean it after use. So, hindi siya masyadong uh, single use. We just wipe it with alcohol. There are some of us who are fortunate to have been given donations like this. So, they're more sturdy. So, I like wearing this because I don't need to remove it. So, it's a uh, when you can't hear the patients anymore and you're outside the patient's rooms, you can just uh, put up your um, shield and put it down again, okay? So we, we deliberately made level two for non-COVID areas because uh, even if you inadvertently missed a diagnosis of COVID, tapos napunta siya sa non-COVID, which is ito ka na, tinitignan siya. The presence of wearing a face mask 
and the face shield will protect you pa rin significantly. And the risk of you getting the infection is still low. Uh, we add that, we add to that the fact na ngayon, lahat ng patients namin sa PGH and should be the standard of care for all hospitals, lahat ng patients dapat naka surgical mask din sa mm, okay. 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 We go to level 3. Yung level 3, may 3 and 4 ka pa. So what uh -huh. is level 3? Level 3 and level 4 are for healthcare workers who work in the COVID wards. Okay? So ang kaibahan lang nila uh, ng level 3 at level 4, yung 4 naka coveralls na sila. Yung level 3 naka gown lang sila. Malaki yung difference sa price nila. <laughs> sa price. But the amount of protection is probably the same. So ang gown, parang ganito itsura niya. Like this. Okay. It's long sleeves. It should protect your clothes underneath. Usually, naka-scrub suit ako ngayon. Naka-scrub suit ako. We require our doctors who will be entering the COVID wards to be in a hospital scrub suit, which uh, after duty, they should uh, remove also to be laundered by the hospital also. So, over the scrub suit, uh, is uh, wearing the gown. We also want them to wear the N95 mask. So, ito, level 2 lang to. Uh, ang level 3 requires us to wear a certain N95 mask like this. There are different brands already. Like ito, pwede rin. Or sometimes, uh, they're shaped like this. Basta ang tawag sa kanila, N95 in the US, in Europe they're called FFP2, and in China they're called KN95. Okay. Ngayon, kasi parang may proliferation ng uh, fake masks, so we made it our policy to fit test. That means, pag finit test, um, there's some amount, we make sure that the seal is. Uh, effective. No? There's an effective seal that uh, is formed by the mask. Kahit na um, merong contaminated air around you, you probably won't inhale any of the viral particles. So that's fit testing the N95 mask. Um, sometimes we care for our patients very up close na minsan we think baka may additional uh, materials that are um, maybe splash into the healthcare workers. Minsan alam nyo yung mga nurses, mga manons, mga nurse aides, they really care for their patients so close. Parang kinakary nila, chinichange nila yung diapers, pinapaliguan nila. There's a very high risk contact type of, um, of activity. So nag add pa kami ng impermeable apron on top of the gowns to give added protection. Of course, on top of all of this are again the face shield. Okay. Tapos, the level four is uh, uh, the wearing of the coveralls. So you see this in different colors. Minsan we like iba-ibang colors eh, kasi uh, na-identify namin kung sino yung mga persons yung love people, kulay blue, yung uh, Still care people, kulay yellow. So this means the almost the entire surface of the skin of the healthcare workers is covered. So meri silang hood. So covered yung, ito na lang yung nakalabas. Pero with the face shield and the N95, wala na talaga matitira, diba? Nakaganyan, tapos may face, uh, may N95 plus the hood will cover the entire body. This is, again, long sleeves with, uh, with the coveralls is pants all the way down to the shoe level. So the entire body of the healthcare worker is 100, almost 100% 100 uh, covered. Okay? Yun. That's uh, it about uh, 
PPEs. Um, there's this series of steps uh, that are in place. Kaya para step one and step two, step three, step four. We need to make sure people know how to properly and tawag sa kanila donning, donning, and doffing, removing. Um, of course, by the time you leave the patient's bedside, kunyari, naka-cover all ka, di ba? Just emergency patient, ubu-ubu siya sa'yo. So the possibility na itong ating cover all ay natalsika na ng mga um, infectious droplets is very high. So by the time you leave the entire area of the COVID, parang challenge din to remove these PPEs uh, safely. Kailangan in the process of docking it, hindi mo ma-contaminate yourself with things that are already in your clothing. So, donning and doffing the PPEs are, you know, a skill by itself. Um, sacrifice siya in a way kasi sobrang init. Eh. Sa Pilipinas, mainit. Di naman aircon yung hospital natin, even if there are a lot of fans. So, they really almost suffer inside these PPEs, but they need to just tolerate them kasi, ano, protection eh. It's their lifeline. And again, um, removing them again is a challenge. So, anong ginawa namin sa PGH? We set up um, very, dun sa donning, meron kami exact donning and doffing places. So, dun sa donning, may mga posters and then step one, step two, step three, step four. So, everybody knew. Oh, prior to all of this pala, meron na sila mga videos na pinanood, PowerPoints, lectures, ganyan. Tapos meron pang guide while they are in the areas. And then number three, we had safety officers. So safety officers, I think, baka PGH lang yung nag-umpisa ng concept na to dito at least during the COVID pandemic in the Philippines. And it's been, the feedback has been so great that we've kept them in place and we have actually added more safety officers. Any safety officer? Siya yung naka, ano siya, mga doctor din ito, mga residents, usually derma, rehab. Gagaling nila kasi they've mastered the donning and the doffing. Tapos pinapanood nila yung bawat healthcare worker and making sure that they do it correctly. Again, we don't leave anything to chance. Um, yan, that complete, walang na-miss, walang na-iwan, tama yung process. And the likelihood of transmission is low. So yun, ang galing nga ng mga derma safety officers na rin. Minsan, kikita pa nila yung mga, oh, doktor, kailangan ka na mag-add ng lotion. Pero <laughs> pang additional uh, skin tips. Kasi, you know, when you're inside the PPEs for 8 hours, kasi yun po yung 8 hour shifts namin, by the time you leave, parang nasira na talaga yung skin mo with all the tips that you put to keep yourself in, you know, to keep the PPEs in place. So, yun. These are the things we've tried to do to uh, protect the healthcare workers and the PPE side. Okay, Nina, you know, just your description uh, uh, can vividly show us how difficult it is to become a frontliner. And... Um, the sacrifice of uh, having to go through the PP as a safety measure even actually uh, emphasizes the role of the, the team in administration and your committee in making this happen. No? So I, I do want to commend your uh, HIKO. It's actually for the viewers. No? This is the hospital, hospital infection control unit that Dr. Burba actually heads. And before the before the, the pandemic, she was already in charge of this. And sabi nga niya eh, talagang iba, no? it's drastic. And we had to think of all the possibilities to even add protection to our health workers. But Dr. Nina, I have another question for you. Because this has been asked many times. Um, so when do you test a health worker? Because I know that not all, not all health workers are tested. So what is our criteria for testing? Despite all the measures you do, parang meron pa ring pwedeng magkasakit, you know? So what we do, um, we've set up also part of the administrative controls. Believe it or not, we actually gave our staff 
a quarantine period each time they work. So for example, uh, we, we divided everybody into three teams. So my team A, team B, team C, and each of the teams will work only for seven consecutive 14 days. And this is based on the incubation period of the virus. But if you become a team days after your last exposure, okay ka na. So that's, that's the principle behind this. Parang paradoxical kasi kailangan namin ng maraming tao. But here we are putting people at long quarantine periods and putting them on leave. But we found out that it really helps a lot. Kasi for one, nare-rejuvenate. Kasi sobrang pagod na pagod yung mga healthcare workers. I think it's not just the physical aspect of going on duty, yung eight hours ka nandun. It's probably also mentally very difficult, psychologically, and everything else emotionally. Yung pagpasok pa lang nila sa dawning, sasabihin namin, ah, sige ah, dapat physically ready ka, kumain ka na, pumunta ka na sa banyo, kasi ang mahal-mahal ng PPE, ayaw namin na after 10 minutes, lalabas ka, hindi tatanggalin mo siya ulit, eh, sayang lahat na. So, we'd like them to try to make it four hours to eight hours nga, nagsasacrifice sila talaga na eight hours sila hindi lumalag. Yung mas hirap na, na kasi alis hindi ka banyo nun talaga for eight straight hours. So, uh, yun, you need to be physically, mentally, psychologically ready. Yung mga girls, hindi na sila nag-makeup, wala, nothing. Kasi, mag ma sisira yung mask eh we'd like to protect the mask uh, wala nang jewelry bag kahit na ano kasi masisira ka, mapunit yung mga yung mga PPEs namin and uh, I think the biggest sacrifice is the cell phone kasi we didn't allow the cell phone inside the COVID areas so, na walang tataguan tapos madudumihan and all that I think that's the biggest sacrifice for 8 hours you imagine people without their cell phones it's very difficult. But again, yan. Ah, Mom Manchit, I'd like to just, uh, I think I'd like to share this also. Yung PPE part, parang may science yun eh, no, na kailangan ganito, ha? kailangan, sasabihin namin, kailangan, this is how to increase your risk for transmission. But alam niyo yung mga nurses namin, so, minsan kasi pag naka-full battle gear, di mo na makilala yung mga tao. What do like to do? Keep the personal touch with the patients. Naglalagay sila ng mga photos nila dito or smiling face or nilalagay nila yung names nila sa, sa mga hazmats nila para parang they can still connect to their patients. Which I thought was, you know, didn't teach them this but out of their own, parang they felt the need to reach out to very lonely patients. I think lonely yung patients kasi walang kumakausap sa kanila tapos at sila wala family nila doon. But our nurses and the doctors, they go out of their way. Despite the risk, they try to help this patient. So I thought that was very good to add on to everything I said. Thank you, Dr. Nina. I mean, you know, such a um, very unique way of uh, adding protection. No? The one week and two weeks off for the frontliners. Um, you're right, it's not just the physical thing, but the psychological way of uh, uh, getting back to, to hard work. Um, may ikli talaga ang panahon natin, Dr. Verba. But in that minute, it's you to uh, give your final message to the health workers and also to the hospital administrators. Because I feel like, you know, with this episode, we've got two big groups that we really want to, to address. Let's start with the health workers. Mm -hmm. Actually, I wasn't able to answer your question about the testing. So, um, the healthcare workers, our goal is we, of course, as a hospital community, our, the reason we are there are really for the patients to care for them. Kahit na sobrang sakit nila, at saka sobrang infectious nila. So, they're really a risk to us. Uh, this is our work, this is our job, this is what we committed to, this is what we want to do, so let's do it well. Um, as I said, let's believe in the science of the PPEs. Um, we think this will work and it's been working. And just to really hang in there and I'm sure together we'll be able to open. Yeah. 
ah, hindi ko pa rin nasagot yung tanong sa, sa testing. So, so uh, if during the quarantine, yung 14 days that they are on rest, they develop any kind of symptom, kahit ano, kahit na very mild, sipon, sore throat, headache, uh, myalgia yan, yung nasakit ng muscles, or hindi makatog, medyo out of the ordinary for that particular healthcare worker, then we go ahead and test them. Uh, tawag doon self-monitoring. We give them a form, be a physical form or an online form. We check on them every day. The UPH does that, that. Tapos kung at any point there's any doubt na, oh, baka nagkasakit siya, maybe she got something, so we test them right away. Okay, thank you. And uh, just a few words, one short message to our hospital administrators. So, the, you know, the, the whole COVID pandemic challenge uh, really took the entire PGH administration and community. Uh, and I think it really brought the best out of us, individually and collectively. Um, parang naging yung bayanihan spirit was so visibly there. You could feel it talaga. And um, it's uh, very inspiring to be part of that team. So, ganun din, I hope that uh, feeling and, and that uh, commitment to just continue working towards getting control of this pandemic. Uh, we're one of the systems as a hospital working towards that and with all the other systems in our country, surely and globally, we'll be able to make it there post a COVID pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nina. Thank you for giving us your pearls of wisdom on how to protect the health worker. And, um, uh, well, we thank you for having a second episode with us. And hopefully, post GCQ, and by the time we have the GCQ, we'll have another opportunity to have you as our guest. Maraming salamat, Dr. Thank Nina. Thank you very much. Healthcare workers around the world are at the front line of the daily battle don't take the virus to save lives. The occupational safety and health of healthcare workers is fundamental to enable them to do their jobs during this crisis. Their protection must be a priority. To ensure their safety, adequate provision of PPE is just the first step. Our other practical measures include provision of food, rest, family support, and psychological support. This is Manchit Padilla. This is Kalusugan Aikarapatan. Music